Hey everyone, I've been making mobile games from home for several years now and today I wanted to show you my complete setup. It's not the fanciest, but it's practical and gets the job done. By the way, I have a Patreon now where I share some additional cool stuff about game dev, so be sure to check it out. So this is my main machine, the Asus ROG Strix G73 2LXS. It's about 4 years old now, but honestly it still handles everything I throw at it. The specs are pretty solid. It's got an Intel Core i9 processor with 8 cores that runs at 2.4 GHz base. For graphic, it's packing an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Super with 8 GB of video memory, which is more than enough for 3D, game development and testing. I've got 32GB of RAM, which is really important when you're running game engines, multiple emulators and have a bunch of Chrome tabs open at the same time. Storage-wise, there's almost 2TB, a running Windows 11 Pro. Now you might be wondering why I went with a laptop instead of a desktop. I actually used to have a full desktop PC setup with two screens, but here's the thing, we travel from time to time and I need to keep working from time to time. So I made the switch to using only a laptop, and the Rockstrix has been a perfect for this. It's powerful enough to run everything I need, but still portable enough to throw in a backpack when we're heading out. The screen is pretty big, it's 17 inches. Sometimes I connect to this BenQ PD2705Q external monitor, it's a 27-inch QHD display with an IPS panel. The height adjustable stand is also really nice for ergonomics. Okay, this might sound weird, but my favorite mouse is this basic Logitech B110. It's a simple USB wired mouse, nothing fancy. Here's the thing though, it breaks every year or so, like, like clockwork. But you know what? It only costs about 10 euros, so I just buy a new one. So I've probably gone through 3-4 of these in the past few years. Some people might say I should invest in a better mouse, but honestly, I love how this one feels. And the price point means I've never stressed about replacing it. Now here's my MacBook Air M2. This thing is basically a very expensive iOS build machine for me. I only use it for two things, making iOS builds for my mobile games and video calls. See, my Windows laptop doesn't have a camera, so whenever I need to jump on a video call with someone, I use the MacBook. The specs are pretty straightforward, it's got the Apple M2 chip with an 8-core CPU and 10-core GPU, 8GB uh, of unified memory and 520GB SSD. Now you might be thinking, why did I buy the whole MacBook just for this? Well, let me tell you the story. I used to try making iOS builds using a virtual machine on my Windows laptop and it was slow, like painfully slow. A build that should take 10 minutes would take an hour or more. Eventually, when I started actually making money from my games, I decided to invest in a proper MacBook. And honestly, it was worth every penny. The time it saves me on every single iOS build has paid for itself many times over. Alright, let's talk about my testing devices, because when you're making mobile games, you need to test on actual hardware. This is my iPhone 16 with 256GB of storage in black. This is my main phone that I use for everything – calls, messages, social media, but also testing my iOS games. Uh, it's always good to test on the device you actually use daily, because that's the real-world experience. Then I've got this iPhone 12 mini. I keep this specifically for testing purposes. Why? Because it has different screen size. What looks good on iPhone 16 might have layout issues on the smaller uh, 12 mini screen. It's important to test across different screen sizes to make sure UI scales properly. And here is my Android testing device, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite. I use this exclusively for testing my games on Android. I also play other games on it sometimes, you know, for research purposes. But yeah, having a dedicated Android device is crucial, because Android and iOS can behave very differently. For audio, I use in the Logitech G Pro X gaming headset. It's a wired headset, and I actually prefer wired over wireless for one simple reason – I never have to worry about the battery dying in the middle of a call or when I'm testing game audio. Now, these next two pieces are probably my favorite parts of my entire setup. This is my Air Gear Electric Stand and Desk. It's 120 by 60 centimeters, and I can adjust the height with just the touch of a button. It got smart control panel with four memory presets, so I can instantly switch between my preferred sitting and standing heights. As a game developer, I spend a lot of time at my desk. 
I'm talking 8, 10, sometimes 12 hours a day. This isn't that much really bad for your health. And being able to switch to a standing position throughout the day has honestly been a game changer, not just for my physical health, but also for my productivity and focus. Sometimes when I'm stuck on a problem, just standing up and adjusting my position helps me think more clearly. But here's where it gets even better. This is my walking pad P1. It's a compact foldable treadmill that, that fits perfectly under my standing desk. With this, I can literally walk while I'm working. I can walk while I'm coding, walk while I'm debugging, walk when I'm answering emails. I set it to two kilometers per hour speed and it helps me to hit at least 10,000 steps per day even uh, on those days when I'm deep in development and barely leave my desk. So that was it. Thanks for checking out my setup and I'll see you soon. Bye.